Hi, I'm Greg from RV Haulers. I've been the host of many RV hauler truck customization and conversion videos. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to witness the Fuel Economy Championship of the World. RV haulers fans, are you ready? Introducing your first championship contender. This fighter stands at 11 feet, 4 inches tall, weighing in at 18 thousand pounds with a professional record of 635,000 miles sporting a factory rear end ratio of 3.55 fighting in the white trunks drift and in this corner introducing your second contender for the championship of fuel economy this fighter also stands at 11 feet 4 inches tall also weighing in at 18,000 pounds with a professional record of 605,000 miles, sporting a new rear end ratio of 2.64. Also fighting in the white trucks, welcome Wilson. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! So I'm gonna get drift up to highway speed. We're gonna go 60 miles an hour for this first pass. You'll see we're heading straight west. And what we'll do is get them up to that speed and I'm gonna reset my fuel economy gauge on the dash. Now drift has not had a wheel alignment yet. We still have to put the bed on the back and that's one of the last things that I do. But let's get him set for cruise control at, there we go, we're 62 miles per hour. And we're going to reset all of our fuel to zero. And right now we're heading into crosswind and what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to zero these trucks at exactly the same point so I paid attention to where I was on the highway back there and we're going to cruise down the highway keep the speed consistent hopefully nobody pulls out in front of us and we'll call this pass number one with drift at a 3.55 rear end ratio so we are running 62 miles per hour RPMs are at 1400 and let's head down the highway. I'll speed the video up. Okay, we've averaged 9.4 miles per gallon into a very stiff headwind. I've had my decibel meter running. The average that I'm seeing is between 69 and 70 decibels, so I'm averaging that up. What we're going to do is now take drift onto another highway. Again, we're generally heading west, and we're going to go a little bit faster. And I, wanna, I don't want to go over the speed limit too much and get a ticket, but the speed limit here is 100 kilometers an hour. Okay, starting our deceleration. That was 10.5 miles per gallon on that stretch. And watching my decibel meter for that bit at the higher speed, we had two more decibels. 72 is the average. This time east.
I'm also going to make a notation that the decibels went up to 72 dB in the wind. All right, I have written it down by pass too because that's this. I'm going to compare those two sheets when we're done here, and that's for the same section of road. So this is the point where we started our first speed test or mile per gallon test and we have averaged 16.5 miles per gallon Oop, 66 on that stretch of road pretty impressive even for a 355 let's swap trucks let's get into Wilson and see how he does I want to point out a little bit about this decibel meter on my phone. I don't think it's a highly accurate device. <coughs> but if you look at the volume that it's, or the decibel reading that it's getting just idling, 54, I'll turn off the truck. and it's showing 30 decibels when the truck is off. So fairly accurate, I think. Well, let's move all my equipment into Wilson and see how he does.
Well, here's my raw numbers on how we did. Drift and with his 355 did 9.4 and 10.5 heading west. Wilson 10.8 and 12.1 so a consistent improvement. What I will also mention is I think the uh, noise issue is a non-issue. Where I had my phone, where it was sitting, um, it seems like the numbers are really the same. And if we compare my eastbound, which was with a bit of the wind, drift was 16.6 versus Wilson who got 18.2. And on the second pass, drift was 11.3 and Wilson was 12.6 so and again the wind I think was pretty darn close you know this varied between 71 decibels and this was 69 to 72 so I think it's the same um, but what I will point out is consistently across all four of my road conditions uh, my numbers held true now I'll bring up on the screen here the variables that I controlled but I had an opportunity with two trucks that were literally a few VIN numbers apart on the uh, build from Volvo. So these came off the factory at the same time within probably hours. Um, same tires, same pressure, I bought the same fuel, I carried the same fuel approximately, same additive. Um, you know, I don't think the driver was much of an effect because I did, you know, start and end my fuel economy while we were underway at the desired speed. But the dyno reports on these engines are the same. The uh, drive shafts have all been done. The synthetics we used between the two trucks were identical. Um, I think we really controlled the variables effectively, but we have seen a, a pretty good improvement in fuel economy. We'll, do, we'll run the numbers a little bit, we'll see what those improvements are, but it's up to you whether you think that a rear end ratio change getting down into you know the numbers like a 264 like we have on Wilson is really effective depends on how many miles you put on what you think the how long are you going to keep the truck and use it everybody has a different experience and different plans for their RV hauler so I'll leave it up to you whether the return on investment is really there for a rear end ratio change if you're going to put on a hundred thousand miles on a truck it probably is. Now this was a bobtailed test. We'll try to do another test here in the future when I get the beds installed and when I get everything identical on, in that regard we'll try to hook up some trailers and see how the trucks perform uh, with a little bit of weight behind them. Thanks for watching. You know my RV Haulers website is www.rvhaulers.ca. Thanks for going for a ride with me.